Healthy Cleveland. I'm your host, Leah Longbreak. Today's topic is on bed bugs. With us is Mary McNamara, the Director of Aging for the City of Cleveland, and Brian Kimball, who is the Commissioner of Environment with Cleveland Department of Public Health. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So one of the production staff uh, earlier m mentioned the childhood phrase, you know, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. And, you know, as a kid, you just kind of laugh that off. But it's actually something that's becoming an epidemic now. Is it not? You're actually, actually you're, you're right. And I do remember that, that saying. I was taught that as well. But it is an epide epidemic now. What exactly is a bed bug, though? A bed bug is an insect, a brown uh, colored insect, probably about the size of an uh, a apple seed. Uh, they, uh, are, they feed on humans and mammals and other mammals. Uh, and they're attracted to our carbon dioxide. Huh. Where uh, exactly do they come from and where, where do these infestations begin? These bed bugs have been with us for 10,000 years. They've been here. Uh, there was a time uh, around World War II where um, the, the pesticide that was used kind of eradicated them from our community. But that, that pesticide was outlawed and it's no longer available and can't use. There were significant health risks around using the, uh, that pesticide. Where exactly are they found? Like, is there certain areas of the United mm. States or in our homes? They're all over. Uh, if you look at the map and if you kind of Google uh, bed bugs, and they list the number of cities who have a high population or high incidence of bed bugs. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio happens to be one of those. Uh, areas mm -hmm. in which there is a significant presence of red bugs. Yeah. Uh, they travel well, uh, uh, not necessarily as some people may think, they don't fly, uh, but they do latch onto uh, luggage, uh, mail, it, th have things shipped. So they can travel very well and um, just- More like crawlers? They're crawlers, they, cr they crawl rather fast, uh, but they're looking to hide or they're looking for their next uh, meal and their meal is a blood meal. So uh, that is what they need to survive, uh, but they can go a number of days without, a number of months without a blood meal. So mm -hmm. almost like a leech. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Like going to yeah. like latch on. Latch on, yeah. But uh, leeches will stay on. So uh, a butt bed bug will uh, bite you, it will uh, feed and then release and then go back into uh, hiding. What attracts them? Uh, your body. The heat, the warmth, uh, and the uh, the carbon dioxide. So you mentioned the bed bug bite. Yes. Say that three times. Um, what exactly does it look like, though? What are the signs and symptoms we should be aware of? Bites are similar to what you would think of when you look at mosquito bites. There are whelps and show up on some people. There are bumps that show up on others. Uh, they're usually in one central area. You usually find them on uh, in areas that are not covered at night. Um, those are usually the, the most common areas where you see bites and it's like welts. feet and hands. Yeah, feet and hands, yeah. Now, what's the best way that we can protect ourselves and our home from these bed bugs? Well, if you look at the physical, uh, the home, the physical environment, you want to look for, um, you want to naturally look into around your bed, uh, but you want to look for live uh, activity uh, of bed bugs. You want to look for they uh, shed their skin uh, periodically, so you want to look for sh uh, their skin. Uh, it would be a light cover colored um, shell like. And then you look for little fecal, little black dots or rusted dots that you will find on your bed sheetings, your bed linens, uh, and, and, and furniture as well. So you look for those type of, uh, those type of signs and that would, could be a good indication that, that you do have some Inf an infestation or there's a presence of bed bugs. Because like the mattress is a key spot to look for. Yeah. That's what you hear mm -hmm. oftentimes with bed or bugs. Or if, if you're, if you, someone is, uh, sleeps on the couch okay. and that's there, or sits on a couch for a number of hours, mm -hmm. uh, that might be somewhere where they're attracted, that, that the bed bugs and that would attract the bed bugs to that uh, couch or sofa, mm -hmm. uh, wherever they're, they spend a lot of time. You mentioned luggage. What about with traveling, with work, with school? Because it has to go past the home. Yeah, it does. And I, I do travel some. 
Uh, and I'm always leery going mm -hmm. into hotels and do I take my clothes off and put them in a the drawer or what do I do? So uh, the, I think what I've learned uh, just in, in this field is I never take my clothes off. But what I do is uh, I do check the, the room. Uh, I do mm -hmm. check my luggage when I get to the room, see if there's any uh, maybe th uh, a bed bug or an egg or something that may have latched onto my luggage. And then I do a quick check of the room and make sure there's no mm -hmm. presence of any uh, bed bugs there. And until then, I don't take anything out of my, my luggage. Uh, I will hang things up, but I won't put anything in a drawer because really you can't really, really check it as well as you could uh, if, you, if you were at home. Whether it's traveling to a hotel or just going to work, are there certain kinds, styles of bags and luggage that you should be using more than others? For example, a fabric versus a plastic or? Well, plastic, yes. Plastic is something that you can, that doesn't have seams, uh, that you can uh, readily see mm -hmm. anything that's on there. Uh, a bag that has many seams, many zippers, gives the, uh, the opportunity for the bed bug to hide in those crevices and mm -hmm. in those areas that are not, you can't always see. I want to go back to the bed bug bites for one more second because um, I read somewhere that like 30% of mm -hmm. people don't show signs or symptoms. Why is that and how do you know if you have it then? Well, I, I can't explain why that is, but that is true. Uh, there are a percentage of people who uh, don't show signs. Uh, some people, it takes them longer to show signs. Uh, it may take up to a week for them to exhibit uh, a welt or a bite. Uh, and then others don't show any signs. Uh, it's very, uh, I haven't come across any information that really details why or gives uh, a reason why that is the case. Yeah. Mary, mm -hmm. with aging, I'm sure you've heard from elderly um, members of our community. Mm -hmm. Why does it seem like bed bugs tend to be more problematic with older adults? Mm -hmm. Well, about six or seven years ago, I can remember a spike in phone calls we got at the Department of Aging about people mentioning bed bugs. And that was really the first time I had thought, what's happening? Why are we hearing about this? And we began to track the number of calls. And what we've learned in the process, we, one, joined the Cuyahoga County Bed Bug Task Force to educate our staff. We regularly send staff to training so we get more knowledgeable. But we learned because Brian had shared that they're the size of an apple seed. So what we know with growing older is that comes with diminished eyesight. And so these can be really hard to see, these bugs. And so you may not notice you have a uh, few bed, bed bugs in your home and then it becomes an infestation. Brian also shared that you really have to get down on your hands and knees and look around your bed, lift up your mattress, see if it's there. As we get older, we may have mobility issues. And so we may not be looking when we're changing our sheets, really to see if there's any signs of bed bugs. And so with older adults, one of the things we see is they could have an infestation and not know it. But as Brian mentioned, and you had talked about 30%, they do think that could be related to medications you may be on, that 30% oh, wow. that may not have a reaction to it. And so we know older adults are typically on more medication than other age groups. And so all of these factors come together. Um, and one of the reasons I think it impacts older adults is it's not cheap to eradicate bed bugs. And uh, um, the cost of it may be cost prohibitive for someone who's on a fixed income and they may not know what it is. And then it grows to such a point where, you know, their doctor's office may bring it to their attention or they may, the, the bus they use to, um, for transportation mm -hmm. may bring it. We hear that at the Department of Aging. So all of those reasons are why we particularly want to get this information out to older adults because there's no shame in bed bugs. They do not um, establish themselves in dirty homes. As Brian said, they go after human blood, right? And it's when you're sleeping. So it doesn't matter if your home is spick and span or a little cluttered like mine. Yeah. Uh, they, can, they can take root in, in any home. It's not specific to clutter mm -hmm. or dirt. Yeah, and that is a misconception, mm -hmm. I'm sure. So what are some treatments that are available? What should we be doing and what should we not be doing? Right. I think the first thing I try to tell people is you want to inspect your home. So mm -hmm. first, inspect your home yourself if, you, if you're able. If you're not, hire a professional to come in and inspect your home. 
you want to identify whether or not you have uh, bed bugs. Uh, it may be something that may be uh, ticks or something else. So you want to make sure mm -hmm. and verify, confirm that it is, uh, there are bed bugs present. Then you want to, if you can, hire um, a professional. But we can give some tips on how to, uh, at least you can start addressing the issue. Uh, you can do things like uh, washing your linen more often, uh, making sure that you wash it and dry it in a high, uh, on a mm -hmm. high temperature uh, in your dryer. So that if there is a presence of bed bugs, you will kill them with the heat. Uh, you, can, um, you can also, uh, as I said, identify in, uh, I said identify or inspect your, your furniture. Mm -hmm. So looking in, in between the cushions, looking into your mattresses, taking it up, mm -hmm. lifting them up, looking in the crevices to identify if there's any presence. If you see any rusty spots, any black spots, it's probably, the, the, you probably now know that you have an, uh, uh, an issue with bed bugs. So uh, again, hiring a professional is the best approach, but if you can't, uh, at least identify if you have it, uh, wash your clothes more frequently, wash linens more frequently, uh, and then um, I would not recommend some of the uh, items that you see in the store. I was going to ask, like, yeah. you, there's always those bug bombs and right. stuff like that. Yeah, uh, that would be, I know that they, uh, they're marketed to say that they kill 100% or something like that. Um, if that's the only resource that you have, naturally take that. But my recommendation, our recommendation from the health department was to hire a professional to go out and um, uh, address the issue. Are the bug bombs more like a temporary fix? It's a temporary. So uh, the items that you see in the store, most of them you have to make contact with the bed bug. So um, if you're not in direct contact with the bed bug, then uh, the residue will dry up in a couple of days and bed bugs will come back out. Very good. Well, we have a lot more ground to cover, but we have to take a quick break. But we'll be right back with more Healthy Cleveland. One in six seniors faces the threat of hunger, and millions more live in isolation. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say a quick hello. Volunteer for Meals on Wheels by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. One in five Americans has come into contact with these bloodthirsty creatures or know someone who has. Reports of infestations have reached pandemic proportions. Bed bugs, they feed on human blood and can leave skin erupting in red, itchy welts. They're also very difficult to control. Bed bugs do not just live in bedrooms, but wherever people go, schools, movie theaters, offices, not even hospitals are immune to their invasions. The only way to prevent the spread of bed bugs is for each and every one of us to be vigilant and proactive, to learn the simple daily steps that minimize the chances of bringing bed bugs into our lives. And if they do get in, don't go it alone. Bed bugs are most effectively controlled using the help of a qualified and licensed pest professional. Learn more about the bed bug pandemic and how to protect your home and family at pestworld.org. Welcome back to Healthy Cleveland. I'm your host, Leah Longbreak. Today's topic is on bed bugs. With us is Mary McNamara, the Director of Aging for the City of Cleveland, and Brian Kimball, the Commissioner of Environment with the Department of Public Health. Welcome back. Thank you. We were talking before the break about tips on how to assess bed bug issue, issues and what we should and shouldn't be doing. Are there any additional ones that we didn't touch upon yet? I, I think one of the things I, I meant to, to uh, I should have mentioned is vacuuming. Uh, using a vacuum with a bag uh, and vacuuming around your bed, around mm -hmm. um, different furniture, in the crevices, in the cracks, in the creases, uh, that would help reduce uh, that as well. But what you want to do is make sure that when you dispose of the bag, you wrap it in a plastic bag real tight and you can put it into your uh, regular waste. Uh, but making sure that you change bags in between the different uh, vacuuming events. 
Are there other areas of the home we should be looking aside from the bed? Or even at home, at work and school as well? Yeah. Uh, bed bugs have, typical, uh, have similar behaviors, similar to uh, roaches. So they're gonna be attracted to warm spaces, uh, like uh, electric outlets, uh, electric switches, uh, around baseboards, if you have baseboard heats, you will find them in the crevices and behind there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to hide. Is they're going to hide uh, in those cr creases and cracks uh, wherever you have uh, in your in your home. Uh, one thing we do recommend that they, uh, if you have these crevices, these creases, these cracks, if you can fill them in, uh, that would help as well. Oh, so just some simple caulk can even help. Simple, yes. Mary, I know the Department of Aging has a program. Mm -hmm. We were talking about extermination earlier. They have, you have a program for um, homeowners that will help with extermination. Tell us about that program. We do. So about six years ago, we started a bed bug extermination program. As we had seen a spike in calls and older adults telling us they were having a hard time affording the integrated pest management that Brian spoke about, really having professionals out to, to look at this. Um, because I'll, I'll tell you the story, I was out of a senior's house where the bed bugs had even gotten behind the picture frame. You know when oh, you wow. take apart a picture frame and you pull off the cardboard? Yeah. There were bed bugs inside of that. Oh, and wow. so they really are great hiders. And so um, finding all of them and killing all of the eggs is critical. So we began this program. It is available to City of Cleveland residents for people 60 years of age and older or individuals 18 to 59 um, who are on disability. It is based on your income. So for a household of one this year, the income needs to be less, the gross income, than $21,857. And then it just increases in amount by the number of people in your household. So you need to be the homeowner, this is for homeowners, a one or two family house, and then meet the age and income criteria. It's a pretty easy application you would send that back into the Department of Aging. We would then process it, and we have a contract with an exterminator who then will come out and assess your home and let you know, you know, was it fleas or is it bed bugs mm -hmm. or no, you don't have an issue, and then tell you how to prepare for the extermination. And I'm sure Brian will get into that because that's a key piece is you really got to be ready for the exterminator to come. But this program, we've gotten some incredible feedback from older adults that this really has improved the quality of their life, that they had really reduced going out because once someone knew they had bed bugs, they weren't welcome in their home the anymore. The shame you were talking about earlier. Right, they maybe weren't going to the senior center or their faith-based community because they were worried they would give someone else bed bugs. Mm -hmm. And that's something we don't talk about in our community. And so that's why we're just grateful to get this information out for people about what's out there, what are, what are the tips, resources. I will also share with you the county senior and adult services uh, program uh, also has a bed bug program that started after ours, really mimicking it because they saw the response we had received. So for viewers that live outside of the city of Cleveland and in the county, it's very similar guidelines. What are some of the challenges that older adults are facing when it comes to the extermination process? Mm -hmm. One of the things we hear most is preparing the unit for it. So I will add at this point, we see a high number of calls from people who live in senior apartment buildings. So the program I spoke about, our extermination program, doesn't deal with renting issues around exterminating. But because there are 94 different senior buildings in the city of Cleveland, and these bugs travel fast and far, and so you, your next door neighbor may have bed bugs. Right, and you may get them because you share a wall together. And so apartment buildings need to be especially vigilant, senior apartment buildings, about um, making sure their residents are informed about it, that they have regular integrated pest management, and that they have a process for people to report it without feeling like they might get evicted because of reporting bed bugs. So preparing the unit, you know, you have to take apart the entire bed to really get to the bed frames. And so for an older adult, that may not be possible right. for them. So we ask older adults as part of the application process to, we work with them to try and identify someone they trust that can help them prepare. Brian spoke about the need to do all of the laundry and to, you know, if we go in and treat, then we need to clean everything. And right. so getting items to the washer and even more important to the dryer so that the heat can kill them. Taking um, out the drawers in the dressers in your bedroom. So 
we really focus on the bedroom area. The feedback I get from the exterminators is that's where we start and then we look at the entire unit. But high volume of clothes, all of the things that might be difficult for someone to, to bag up and launder, am I right, Brian? All really at the same time, you know, as yeah. the exterminator's out, you're needing to do these other steps. Yeah. It's so many steps involved. You mentioned renting. Who's responsible if you are a renter and bed bugs occur? If you are a renter, your landlord is responsible for addressing the issue. So you report the issue to your landlord, uh, and the landlord is required to address that and hire a professional to come in uh, and uh, identify whether or not there is bed bugs and then uh, mm -hmm. provide treatment. Uh, if uh, renters do have uh, uh, concerns or issue and landlords are not, uh, addressing the issue or not listening to them, the health department could come out and inspect the, uh, the unit, identify if there are uh, bed bugs there, are bed bugs presence, and then cite the owner, uh, encourage the owner to comply mm -hmm. with uh, addressing the issue. Okay, good. With the health department, um, what is the department's role when it comes to handling bed bugs in general? So our role when it comes to uh, rental units uh, is to inspect, identify whether or not there are uh, any bed bugs and uh, work with the landlords to address the issue properly because we just don't want it to, to continue. Uh, we don't want it to, uh, to move to the next spread unit. Spread throughout spread, the building. Yes. Uh, for homeowners, uh, we, don't have the, we don't have the resources to uh, assist home, uh, homeowners or uh, owner occupants. Uh, so we do, uh, we will come out, inspect those units, identify if uh, bed bugs are present, and then give them uh, ref uh, information on how to address it. Uh, we can't necessarily give referrals to exterminators, but we can direct them to uh, the proper sources for uh, identifying uh, a licensed mm -hmm. uh, exterminator. One that you trust. Well, one that license. <laughs> <laughs> the better business bureau. Uh, yeah, I was, that's, like, that's key. That is right. key. Yeah. Now, we've covered a lot of ground, but uh, when it comes to bed bugs, there is a lot of myths out there. So can you kind of break down for us what is fact yeah. and what is fiction? I think one of the biggest myths uh, I've heard uh, that bed bugs fly. Uh, mm -hmm. Bed bugs don't fly. They crawl rather fast, but they don't fly. Uh, another myth is they only come out at night. Uh, they, they typically feed in the uh, morning hours, early morning hours, uh, but they will come out and travel during the day. It's not the light that keeps them away. It's not the cockroach effect right. where you turn so the light you, on right. scatter. Or you can, can't leave the light on all night and, and hope that you chase them away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think those are the two uh, biggest myths I, I, I know. Uh, also, um, bug, uh, bed bugs don't transmit disease uh, from mm -hmm. person to person. So a lot of people, if you know, in a hospital or something like that, they're concerned that there's a bed bug there may travel and make me ill or transmit the same disease uh, to to that person. Yeah. So debunked. Debunked. Yes. Yes. Uh, is there anything else you think viewers should know when it comes to bed bugs, whether it's with aging or just health and environment in general? I think in general, don't panic. I agree. Uh, yeah. Don't panic. Uh, we don't want you. So if we're itching right now, don't freak <laughs> out. Right. Don't panic and throw out items uh, like beds uh, just and think you're going to get rid of the problem. Uh, if you are going to throw out uh, furniture, mattresses, uh, uh, sofas, uh, bookcases, anything like that, you want to make sure it's covered um, uh, in plastic. Uh, make sure that uh, it's wrapped tightly and make sure that no one just um, uh, opens it up. To make see sure it's labeled. There. Labeled, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen that before with uh, when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, putting on the street lawns that yeah. you know people are, have been warned to make mm -hmm. sure it's make sure wrapped up and it's marked like so people aren't just trying to take it. Yeah, because yeah. we don't want them to take it home with them yeah. or take it to a store and sell it, resell it. Yeah. Mary, how about with aging? I also agree that don't panic, right? Get educated about it. So there's resources on the health department's website, aging's website, Cuyahoga County Bed Bug Task Force. So get educated so you know what it's about. Um, I heard uh, from a bug expert this phrase that has stayed with me. It, it's not if you will get bed bugs, it's when you will get bed bugs. And yeah. so if we sort of take that on and think, I have a pretty good chance of getting them because I'm 
out in the community, I see a lot of people, so then what's my, uh, what am I gonna do when I get them, right? So this weekly monitoring of your bed space, if that's possible, to make sure that you're noticing uh, changes in it, those spots Brian spoke about. Um, we also like to get out that information about these trusted um, integrated pest management companies, right? Mm -hmm. So really, you've had on the show before the Better Business Bureau, right? That's a really trusted entity to find out about businesses in our community. You might also ask other people who they use and you know, word of mouth and who people have been satisfied with uh, for that. Um, I think the other piece I would um, add is just bringing up the topic, right? This is something we're dealing with as a community and um, the opportunity to talk about it. I had a good friend whose children got it at school oh, wow. and she called me and she was quite panicked about it and so I was just able to sort of tell the fact from the, the, the myth out there mm -hmm. and then once she realized that she could really figure out how to get rid of the bed bugs then, right? She mm -hmm. knew, she sort of calmed down and got the information she needed and then knowing that there might be, if you can't afford it, there might be resources available particularly for an older adult or an adult with a disability that the city may be able to help you. That's great. How can we get more information on Department of Aging and with health? Um, you can visit our website, clevelandhealth.org. <laughs> or, yeah. I was just on <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and from there you can also be directed towards the county uh, task force on bed bugs uh, and other uh, resources. Wonderful. And the Department of Aging is a page within the city's webpage that um, has both our application and our flyer. So we encourage people to print it out and bring them to their faith-based community. Help us get the word out to individuals that this resource is out there. So you can download and print those applications and submit them right online to us if you'd like. And hopefully today we've helped make the topic a little less taboo. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. It's, it's been a pleasure to have you. And I know I've learned a lot, and I'm sure our viewers have as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Healthy Cleveland. As always, we'll have this information for you at our website, tv20cleveland.com. I'm Leah Longbreak. Until next time. <laughs>